Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Goyojo thermal imaging camera for Android. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this open. Okay, so we have a little tin. Here we have the manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So I'm not going to cover everything in here. You'll want to read through it on your own. So we have some guidelines there. Here we have the packing list, product description. So we have the thermal camera and we have a Type-C interface for Lightning. So at the time I'm recording this, this works for Android and I think you can use it with Lightning in Europe. So here we have the specs. Resolution is 192 by 192. Field of view is 50 degrees. The temperature measurement range is minus 20 degrees Celsius to around 400 degrees Celsius. This talks about downloading the app. It says search for THG start. Then plug in the device and launch the app. So that seems pretty straightforward. So here's the camera itself, USB-C interface, and here's that adapter. So I'm going to connect this up to my tablet. You could obviously connect it to a phone too. So I'll go to the Play Store. I'll search for THG Start. I'll hit Install. I'll plug the camera into the USB port there, and I'll hit open. It says open THG start to handle the camera. It says always open this. I'll say okay. We have a privacy policy, I'll agree to that. This talks about how to use the app. So we have fast real-time temperature measurement, accurate temperature measurement, various predefined and customized palettes, DIY image styles. I'll hit start now. It says allow camera to access the app, I'll agree. Allow the app to take pictures and video. I'll say while using the app. And here it's come up. It says auto calibration. It will calibrate every 10 seconds. You can turn this off for video fluidity. So hit OK. And here we have the thermal camera. So I'll put my hand in front of it. And you can see that. So this is actually seeing the heat in my hand. Let's look at some of the features. So here we have 90 degrees. So this is going to rotate the image. This one here will calibrate. See what this one is. This turns off auto calibration. This shows the regular camera at the same time. This says enhanced IR. So you can turn that on or off. Oh, I just went out. Let me go back in. And then here we have parameter. So we have temperature alarm, temperature unit, temperature range, distance, and emissivity. So I'm going to change the units here to Fahrenheit. Then we have image. So we have color distribution, sharpness, contrast, brightness. Let's go to palettes. So we can change the palette. So it's currently on iron bow, but we can turn it to, let's say, sepia. So that gives us a different look there. So I'm going to hit center. It puts a measurement right in the center. Let's see how that works. Okay, so if we see over here, it's showing the center is at 70 degrees, 77, and it's going up. But we can change this. Looks like we have hot, so that'll show the hottest and cold. So we have min, max, center, and then we can have point. So, we can add this anywhere, I think. We have rectangle. So now we have a rectangle. Also clear, take those off of there. So that's very cool. Now, if we want to take a picture, let me get something hot. Let me put my hand on here, warm this up. Now when you aim this, you want to make sure this is aiming, not the camera in your device. So we have my handprint there. I'll hit this button here, and we're going to take a picture. We can also take a video. So we'll start the video. We have the video of my hand. I'll move around here just a little bit. We'll stop it. And now we have the video. So 
So you want to hit this button up here to switch between the two modes and you still want to hit the shutter button to enable or disable it. So let's back out of here and look at the settings. So we have live view, device upgrade, and device info. Let's see if there's an upgrade here. It says we're using the latest version. We have device info. So it has a couple options there. And then we have our album here. It looks like we have a sample image that came with it. Okay. So that was super easy to use. Now I just wanted to go over the basic usage of it on my bench here, but there's not a lot to look at. So now I'll find some better things to demonstrate this with. Okay, so I'm in my living room and here I have the thermal camera and we're going to point it at this wall here. And this is a corner. So on the left here is the outside corner and this is an inside corner or internal to the house. And if we look at this here, we can see it's a lot bluer here because it's colder. So I have the little center marker on and we can see that's at 61 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we go over here, we're at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's, so it's about what, like say 62. And of course, when you move it around, it's going to be a little different everywhere. We move up the wall, it's about the same there. So if you're doing a home energy audit, what you'd want to look for is the really dark areas if you have this color palette. I mean, there's other color palettes you can use. Now, if you had a wall and you saw warmer colors, but then you saw blue in one of them, it might mean insulation is missing from that specific stud bay. So a neat thing you can do with a thermal camera is look for water leaks. So I have a wall here and I have a wet paper towel and I'll just wipe across the wall. And here you can see that dark spot there. Of course, this is just a thin film. If this was soaked with water, it'd probably be a little bit more distinct even. Okay, so here we have a gas range, and I'm recording this video with the tablet itself. I did need to go in and allow the microphone to be used to record audio, and the audio is not super great quality, but the app will record audio. So I'll turn this off. And now we can see that this is still very hot. Now, if you have really shiny metal items, it might reflect the heat. This is kind of dark, but we're just above coiling there. Here we're looking at a circuit board. The bright spot here is actually an LED, and we can see that's at around 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And then over here, we're at 67. So if this circuit board had a fault, you could look at it for really hot spots and know it's an issue. This is obviously something that's normal with just an LED. But if it was super hot in one spot, you might determine it's a bad component. So this is what a person looks like through the thermal camera. So I'll have the person wave so you can see all the heat in their body. So that's the Goyojo thermal imaging camera for Android. Now I had this pointing forward. I could switch it around and just point it towards myself. Let me just do that. So I'll exit out of here, pull it out. I'll flip it over. Go back to live view. And now it's pointed at me. So one thing I want to point out is I was measuring the stove and I should have gone to parameter here and then temperature range and switched it to the second level, which is 212 to 752, because we're topping out at the first level there. So I really like how easy this was to use. You just plug it in, install the app, and it's ready to go. This does not have an onboard battery, so it draws power from the tablet itself, so you don't have to worry about charging it up. A thermal camera like this is a great tool to have. You can use it for doing home energy audits, science experiments, you can use it for diagnosing problems in electronics. You can use it for diagnosing automotive problems. You could, for instance, run an engine and then use this to check if a thermostat is running or not by checking the temperature of the hoses and coolant lines. And the really nice thing about this is when you're done using it, it just doesn't take up much room. It's so tiny and it does come with this little case. You can put it in. So you can easily throw this in a toolbox or a tool bag and take that with you. And once you have a thermal camera, I think one of the fun things is taking it to friends and family's house and going around the house and looking for cold air leaks and things like that with it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.